Midjourney has just dropped their new personalization feature, and it's an absolute game changer. You can teach Midjourney your own personal idea of beauty, and it will start to create images that are closer and closer to what you want just by adding dash dash p to the end of your prompts. This gives you a third option in addition to turning raw on and off. You can also use other people's personalization codes to start to build up a database of aesthetics to build a new image creation technique. Midjourney just released this feature, so let me show you how to do it. Let's fire up the music and get right to it. In order to get access to the personalization feature, you first need to rate 200 sets of images that you can only do on the website. Head to alpha.midjourney.com. On the left hand side of the screen, you're gonna scroll down until you see the word tasks. Let's click on tasks. Right now there's two options, other options may appear. We're gonna focus on rank images. You can earn fast hours, which is great, but more importantly, when your rank count hits 200, You've earned enough points that you'll have access to personalization. Needs enough data to know what you like. On each of these pages, there's two ways to vote. You can click one or the other, or you hit the number one for the left side, two for the right, and you can click skip if you feel like you can't make a decision. I've hit exactly 200. That's all you need to do to get access between these two images. I'll just choose which one I like. Each of these images, I don't look at the prompt at the bottom because I'm building out just my sense of aesthetics, not prompt accuracy. Which of these images do I like more? Both of these images I like for different reasons. This looks like a pretty good PlayStation. Let's go to the next one. I like this one more. That's really all there is to it. And my score keeps going up. Now I'm at 203 and I've earned enough points. Once you hit 200 for your ranking count, you can then start to use the prompt in your images. And there's two ways to do this. Let's go to create. And if we click the three lines with dots on them, there's a new button here, personalize. I can turn that on or off, and I can turn raw mode on or off. As I'll show you later in this video, I think the best option is raw on, but we're gonna see exactly what that looks like. The other way to do this is to just end your prompt by typing dash dash P. That's all there is to it, and you can start to create personalizations. I'm going to show you some really cool examples right now. The first thing we're going to test and compare personalization is with a very simple prompt. High fashion photography, beautiful supermodel, urban setting, stylized 400. This is the sweet spot. I always use stylized 3 to 400, and this should get us some really cool images. And here are four examples. In the top left corner where it says dash dash style raw, this is the rawest picture. And when we're in raw mode, Midjourney most closely listens to the text of the prompt rather than its own sense of aesthetics. When I'm using consistent characters or when I'm using humans, I usually want to be in style raw. And you can see why by comparing these images. When I'm in style raw and I add my personalization, we get the image in the top right corner where she has that little nose ring. For me, that's the best image of all four in the pack. In the bottom left hand corner, right next to my face, we have her with a much better photograph than style raw, but there are some issues when you look closer. There's some issues with her nose, some issues with her teeth, some imperfections that are fine, but they're not supermodel. They're a little bit more beautiful woman. They're beautiful, but not tier one. In the bottom right hand corner, what we have is normal. So style raw is turned off on the bottom row. Top row, we have raw on, bottom row, raw is off. And we have raw plus personalization and it's over the top. To me, this is just too much. It's doing too many things. So I believe the best way to do this is to be in raw and compare raw to my personalization. But I'm going to show you some different examples for the rest of the examples. Now we're starting to work with consistent characters. The top row is raw and the bottom row is normal without personalization block. Just want to compare these. In these three images, the non personalized, the non raw, the normal mode in the bottom left corner, that's the worst image. It doesn't look like she's in a bunker. Cybersecurity doesn't have the same elements. It looks like she's a stock trader. It's missing the darkness of the aesthetic that I was looking for that is in the prompt. It's more important to just look at these images. For me, the best image is definitely the personalized image. It really got a sense of what I like. That's why I grabbed that tattoo. For each of these images, it generated four, and I just grabbed whichever one is the best from the four pack. So I think it goes top right, top left, bottom. That's my personal opinion. And 
when I'm doing consistent characters, when I'm using model, you should recognize this face because I use her a lot. She's my main example for consistent characters. I'm always in raw mode. I'm always at stylized three to 400 and we get some really great images. Now the normal image in the bottom, it's not bad. It's a good image and let's go to the next page. Here we have a picture that is meant to be like a Mr. Beast thumbnail. That's what I was really testing the location of the slide and the Ferris wheel and some other elements. The best image here actually is the normal image. Second best is raw. The third best for the goal I'm trying to accomplish is the personalized image. Now that's also the most aesthetically pleasing image. If I want a beautiful image, of course the personalized image works. I really like that most of the time. That's what I want. But in this particular instance, I want the middle of the picture empty. And they added all of those boats that look awesome. And the Ferris wheel is supposed to be up on the mountain, not on the ground. The better result, the more accurate are the two images on the left. I really like the raw image and I really like the normal image, but the personalized image, it's not quite right. So it's not always the right answer because sometimes we're looking for something particular and I want it to listen to the prompt a little more strictly. In this image, we have our supermodel in the boardroom. The best image again is the personalized image, but that's my personal taste. When I look at the raw and the normal image, the raw and non mode, there's something wrong with the normal image. There's something about the face that's a little bit overly smoothed. It's a little bit overly airbrushed, almost as though there's a smoothing filter, a de-aging filter. It doesn't feel very natural. It's not quite what I'm looking for. And this is where I most often detect mid journey's preference or its attempt to make things more beautiful. And it pushes the picture in the wrong direction. But I want to know your personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's the best one. That's why I'm showing you all three examples. It's very unlikely that you're always going to choose my personalization because it's my personal taste. The real question is, is it consistently creating my favorite image? Not always, but most of the time. Here we can see a really good example. This is a boy in overall smiling next to a dinosaur. The raw and the normal images are very similar. It's very interesting that they came out very similar. The raw image came out better, in my opinion, than the normal image. The raw has better aesthetics. The dinosaur's eye, if you look closely, it's looking directly into the camera. It creates the effect. Same as in the personalized image. The personalized image feels much more like a drawing. There's a dinosaur in the background. There's a completely different effect. This is where my personalization is so strong that it completely takes away from the original image, which was meant to be a realistic or photograph prompt. Personalization gave me the image that I like the most, but is it the most accurate? Not in this example. Our next picture is a space burger and fries in the future. The normal is better than the raw, but the best picture with the best lighting where it really pops is the personalized image. We've got the best effect there. The other two images, the burger and fries and the shakes, everything's dark. There's some issues with the lighting, the sparks, the sprinkles, they don't feel alive. Whereas it almost feels like someone's welding right off camera. The sparks are hitting the burger and fries and making the cheese melt. There's a lot more excitement. This was a really interesting example for me because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. And I'm trying to show you a lot of different types of images. But my favorite image is the personalized image. Here we have a picture of a uh, Akina. That's a type of dog. And it's supposed to be almost like a coloring book image with a mandala built into it. It created a very different type of image, an airbrush effect. The best image here is really going to be personal. It depends about the effect you're trying to create, the type of image you want to create. The image that made by personalization feels very airbrushed, like drawn on an airbrush style t-shirt. It's a beautiful image and it definitely matches my aesthetics but it's not always what I'm looking for. So I'm not always going to use personalized. I don't want you to think of the P as just a switch you flip on and then it always makes the image you want because it's going to pull the image and it listens to the prompt a little bit less. I almost think the best picture is normal because the dog feels a little bit more alive. It's pulled forward from the flowers and from the background. But all three of these images are in different styles. They're very different. Whenever we have a woman or a human, raw and normal and personalization create really different effects. Your personal opinion is probably going to vary. The top image seems real to me. That seems like a real woman who's just in a very, very good image. The bottom image is the most beautiful of the three women. 
the effect, the butterfly effect, it's not quite as dark or macabre. It's meant to be a Halloween type image, but she feels more like a beautiful fairy. The most aesthetically pleasing for me is the top right image, but I wouldn't even say that these are three images of the same prompt. Each of these images has a very, very different effect, a very different aesthetic. And each of these is going to suit me in different situations. I really am starting to see the personalized function as another tool in my toolkit that sometimes I'll flip it on and sometimes I'll flip it off, just like I turn raw on and off. I used to never use raw mode and now I majority use raw mode. It's really about what type of image I'm trying to pull out of Midjourney, and this is a very cool tool. Our next image is of a motorcycle riding postman in a post-apocalyptic world in a neon city. Midjourney was not able to capture the postman element no matter how many times I tried. When I wanted to create an image of a motorcycle with side bags with postage in it, I had to use Leonardo. But I wanted to create this image. Each of these is really good. The one difference is that the personalized image really feels like it's moving. There's more movement. The rain has more of a kinetic energy and the lighting is on the tires, but not on the middle of the motorcycle. My favorite image is the top right, but I would not complain about any of these. All three of these are images I would use if I wasn't specifically looking for a mailman on a motorcycle. If I just want a neon motorcyclist, all three of these are winners for me for different reasons. And I can see my influence in the images so I can tell how it's responding to me. This is a picture of a 2022 BMW in different settings. It's in the mountains. Right away, you can see the difference between realism and not realism. The best picture for excitement is the top right image, the personalized image, but it doesn't feel like a photograph, whereas the other two really feel like photographs. And between those two, the raw photo is better, in my opinion. The raw photo feels like a better photograph. It's a little further back from the car. It's really interesting. There's a giant rock next to the car. That image still is very interesting. The normal mode image, the rain doesn't look quite right. There's something about the way the rain got in the picture. If it's going to be a super professional image and the water seems a little bit too deep, but really it's not about my opinion. It's about yours because each of these images are in the eye of the beholder. Personalized is not a private parameter. Just because the name is personalized doesn't mean it's locked into you. In fact, these parameters are public and you can use someone else's code as long as you know it to match their aesthetics and you can find them right now in the community feed. This is the feed you can find at alpha.midjourney.com slash explore. And whenever you click on an image that you like, it will show you the prompt used. Here's an image by Subterfugitive, Cyber Goth Fashion Cyborg Photography, Minimalism, Motion Blur, Extremely Subtle Miniature Glowing Inlaid Subdernal Algorithmic OLED Makeup with Gentle Soft Sub versus Scattering Cybernetic Influences Mint Green Sky Ambience. Shallow depth of field. This is an image that I would never think to create myself. Uh, watch this. I can copy the prompt in. And notice that personalized now has a code. If I click that, let's make sure I'm in raw mode. 16 by 9. And I can create an image in someone else's personal style. This is very cool. This is what happens when I create an image using someone else's personalized code. And this image is cool. Just like we can collect style reference codes to have different style aesthetics we really like. Right now, you can't use personalized random. I already checked that to see if you could just get a bunch of different ones to try from. But this means if you don't feel confident in your ability to pick images or you want to create images that are outside your personalized style, you can start to have a collection of a couple of these from your favorite creators, your favorite designers. This is a really cool direction. I think some very interesting things are going to happen where you can get derivative images from the creators that you admire. Here we have a really cool set of comparison images. In the top corner, the image of the woman, this is raw mode. In the top right corner, the image of the man with the face tattoos, this is my personalization style. In the bottom corner, the younger man with the glasses, well, that's done in normal. This is mid-journey's personalization. And in the bottom right corner, we have the personalization of the artist whose prompt I found and was very interested. 
each of these solves a different need. My favorite image, it's almost always my personalization. It really has a good sense of what I like. Each of these is really good. Now, I have a very strong sense of the aesthetic style of this creator, which is very unique. There are some really cool elements in the face, the way there's a mask, the way there's that defaults to that image. This is what the original image I found in the feed of the creator looked like. It had this mask element. But the mask disappears when we go into any of the other personalization or raw normal mode styles. That means that mask element, the lines across the mask, that's their personal aesthetic. Their personalization code creates this effect. And it's really, really unique. This is the first personalization code I found. But I'm going to start to build out a collection and add them to the Midjourney Visual Dictionary as I find other amazing artists out there that are doing really amazing things. I'm very excited to see that all four of these are great images, but each of these is great for different reasons. Having tested the personalization parameter for the few days that it's been out, I'm a really big fan. I had a couple of elements I was very nervous about when I knew they were going to release personalization. I was afraid that it was going to be a default or a switch that you couldn't turn on and off. And that would mean that it would be harder and harder for me to create other styles, especially because Sometimes I create a ton of images for a tutorial. I've created so many consistent character images for my tutorials and my courses, but I don't want to be locked into every single woman looking like that woman. I don't want her to be the only character I can create. I want to create other characters and create male characters. Very interesting to see that from just 200 clicks, it really knows what I like and don't like. I thought I was going to be trained based on images I've created in the past and what I've upscaled or not upscaled, which would also mean all the coloring books I've created would skew the metric as well. This is a very good implementation, better than I was expecting. I'm very pleased. But let me know what you think. Which of the images were your favorite? Do you feel the same aesthetic as I do? Did you like my personalization? Probably not, because it's personalized to me. There were probably some of mine that you liked and some where you liked the raw mode or someone else's personalization, and that's okay. That's what I really wanted you to see is that it's different for each person. It took me less than five minutes to click and train on which images I liked and didn't like, and I just released myself because sometimes I get really stressed out about which one's the perfect image I just go which one do I like one or two one or two one or two and I just went through them as quickly as I could so that it would just be my first instinct and that really worked out well for me if you found this video useful interesting or at least a little bit entertaining please take a moment to hit the like button that will help other people to see these videos if you hit the subscribe button well you'll see more of my videos in your feed and if you hit that bell you'll get notified every single time post a video, which would be absolutely amazing. I'm on a mission to go to 2000 subscribers. We're already halfway there and I'm so excited that you're a part of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please take a moment to leave a comment. I do read every single one of them personally. I would love to know which of the images you liked and which of the images you didn't like so much. Thank you so much for lasting all the way to the end and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button, and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're going to like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're going to love them.